we will be using Gaussian elimination to solve this system of equations that has three variables. So whenever you have more than two variables in a system of equations, or what you call simultaneous equations, it is better for you to use Gaussian elimination by using a system of matrices. Okay, if you don't understand how matrices work, don't worry. Well, matrices is the plural of matrix. Okay, you remember the movie. So, we're just going to create a matrix with this, and it's very easy for you to follow, and you will get it from beginning to the end. Let's get down to it. So the first thing you want to do is just identify the coefficients of each term in each of the equations. So here you have 1, 1, 1, and the answer to that equation is 3, okay, the result of that. So what I'm going to do is create the first matrix, 1, 1, 1, and if you add the answers or the results, of the expression, okay, after you know the numbers, that's these, these numbers here, it becomes an augmented matrix. Because basically what you should have should be 1, 1, 1, but when you add the third side to it, I mean the other side of it, it becomes what they call an augmented matrix. So let's just create an augmented matrix by adding this to it. Okay. We do the same thing for the second equation. It's going to be 2, 3, 7, and this will be 0. 2, 3, 7, this will be 0. And then we're going to get the next one, which is 1, 3, negative 2, and 17. 1, 3, negative 2, and this is 17. So you've created, you've recreated this here. It's the same exact thing. So all of these are x's, everything here is a y, everything here is a z, and these are all the answers for the three equations. Now, what do you do um, with Gaussian elimination technique? What you do is you try to create a situation where you eliminate some of these terms, okay, but you end up with this being alone. Whatever is here is alone, so whatever is here will be equal to this. So it will look like you're saying um, maybe this is 1z will be equal to whatever number is here. All these numbers are going to change as we start the process. So the first thing you want to do is you want to create a zero here. The first thing you want to do is make sure this becomes a zero. How do we make this a zero using this? So what I'm going to do is I will say my third line, row three, okay, the new row three I'm going to be creating will actually be multiplying this because if you multiply this by negative one and you add it to this, your answer is going to be 0. Multiply this by negative 1, add it to this, you get 0. So what I'm going to put here will be actually the first row, row 1. You see I'm using the small letter to show that it was the old row. Okay, row 1 multiplied by negative 1. So I'm going to put a negative sign. Let me rewrite it. So it's going to be negative row 1, okay, added to row 3 added to row 3. That's how I get my new row 3. So the new row 3 is negative row 1 added to the old row 3. So this is what we're going to get eventually. Uh, it's going to become this. So negative 1 plus this is going to give me 0. So nothing else is going to change. So I'm going to write the top ones just like that. Um, the middle one is going to be 2, 3, 7, 0. But what's going to change is the third row because that's what I'm trying to modify. So when I modify the third row, I'm going to get negative 1 um, plus 1 gives me 0, which is the first thing you must do all the time. Make sure this becomes 0. Do the same thing for this. Negative 1 plus 3, oh, it gives you 2. Negative 1 
plus negative 2, that's negative 3. And then negative 3 plus 17 gives you 14. So, you have achieved the first um, objective. The second objective is to make this a zero. Okay? So you want, you, at, at the end of the day, what you're going to have is a matrix that looks like this. You have zero, you have zero, you have zero. So the corners are going to have zeros. The bottom three, one, two, and three will become zero. Once you achieve that, you have uh, virtually used uh, Gaussian elimination to solve the problem. So, so let's go to the next one. Um, we want to make this zero. What can we do here by means of addition and subtraction of rows um, so that this will become zero? Well, if you multiply this by negative 2 and you add it to 2, you're going to get zero. So we're going to be changing row 2. So the new row 2 is going to be the old row 1, the same one, multiplied by negative 2. So it would be negative 2 R1, negative 2 R1 plus this plus this plus row 2. That will be the new row 2. So you're going to have another expression. Okay? So if we start again, remember this time we're only changing row 2. So this will stay the same. This will stay the same. I'm going to write those two out first. 1, 1, 1, augmented 3. And then I have this is going to change, so let me write the bottom one. 0, 2, negative 3. 0, 2, negative 3. This remains 14. So we want to fill up the middle one. The middle row will now be negative 2 R1 plus R2. So we go here. So this would be negative 2 times 1. That's negative 2 plus 2 gives you 0. Negative 2 times 1 is negative 2 plus 3. That's 1. Then negative 2 times 1 is negative 2 plus 7. That gives you 5. Then negative 2 times 3 gives you negative 6. Plus 0 gives you negative 6. So, one more step before we get to our eventual final. So what we're going to do next is try to make this a 0. Now you're beginning to get it. So you can choose to use any row. Okay? Choose to use any row you will be fine. But since this looks like an easy option, okay, to make this a zero, I can multiply this by negative two and add it to this, it's gonna become zero. So let's say our new row three, we're gonna write it here, okay, will be equal to the old row two multiplied by negative two, negative two row two, okay, added to row three. Okay, right now, let's see what that would be. We we'll create a matrix. Okay, remember we're only changing this row now, so we can copy these two. We have one, 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 augmented three. You have zero, one, five, augmented negative six. And then you have, well, we have to recreate that. So negative two R1 plus R3 will be this is going to be 0, so there's nothing to change here. And then this is going to be negative 2 times 1 is negative 2 plus 2 gives you 0. We're going to get 0. And then you have um, negative 2 times 5 is negative 10. Negative 10 plus negative 3 is negative 13. So that's negative 13. And then we have... Um, Negative 6 times negative 2 is going to give us um, positive 12. Positive 12 plus 14 is going to be um, 28, 26. Okay, so that's, here. that's what we have. So we've been able to simplify that. So what does this, we're done. Remember, once you achieve this triangle of zeros, you're done. How do we inter interpret this? So this is the interpretation of this Gaussian elimination. This term here, if you remember, all the terms on this side represent the z's. Okay? So we're saying that there is an equation where negative 13z 
equals 26. So you can start. Okay? You can start by explaining what you've done. So you say from here, negative 13z equals 26. It means z equals 26 over negative 13, which gives you negative 2. We got the first answer, z equals negative 2 in this equation. So let's go on. If you get to the second line, you actually have 1 plus 5z, remember, which would be 1y. Remember, these are the y's. Okay, so you have y plus 5z is negative 6. You quickly do that also. You have y plus 5z equals negative 6. Now, what is your y? y is, we don't know, but we know z already is negative 2. So 5 times negative 2 equals negative 6. So y equals negative 6 plus 10. Y will be equal to 4. Okay. Yeah, I skipped a step here, but I believe you understand. Okay, let's just move on. So, and then you want to get z, you can come to the very first equation. x plus y plus z equals 3. 1x plus 1y plus 1z equals 3. Let's use that. So, you know what? I can actually do that here. So, I can say x plus y plus z equals 3. We already know y to be 4 and z to be negative 2, so we can tell that x will be equal to 3 minus y minus z, which will be 3 minus 4 minus z. z is negative 2. Okay, this will be equal to 3 minus 4 is negative 1. This is going to become plus, and negative 1 plus 2 gives us 1. So x equals 1 and y equals 4, and z equals negative 2. That's how you use Gaussian elimination to solve a system. It's usually clean. Um, if you do your work well, you don't make mistakes. You shouldn't make mistakes, okay? And just know what to do. Don't forget you can manipulate any of the rows to get your answer. But that's what you call Gaussian elimination. Now, there's something else. It's called the Gaussian Jordan elimination. Now, what that just means is that instead of you stopping here, you have to look for a way to make this zero. I mean, to make um, this zero, you want to make this one. So what would you do so that this becomes one? You want to make this zero, make this zero, so that at the end of the day, you have a matrix that looks like this. You have one here, you have zero, one, zero, and you have 0, 0, 1. That way, you can get your z straight from the matrix, y straight from the matrix, and z, I mean x straight from the matrix. But I wouldn't do that unless I am compelled to do that. Don't use the Gaussian uh, Jordan uh, method, okay, elimination. You just want to stop as soon as you get here, you find the first, you can use simple linear equation to find the second, and you can always get the third in that case. Okay, if you learned anything in this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up, you share it, and you subscribe if you're not subscribed. Once again, my name is Newton Okwoye. Never stop learning, because those who do have stopped living. I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.